Okay, getting towards the end of a decade, it's it, it is. How much it's hard to do like a one year review? A decade review is even harder because you start thinking about other movies that you saw. Like, oh, it's a big movie. Is it in the top ten though? No. Should I separate series from other things? Yeah. So I'll go first. I'll go with I go with I'll go with the series. I just picked four, just four, because I know I'd be like, well, you had Chronicles of Narnia, then the sequel. At the same time, you also had, you know, the Harry Potter movies. Uh, you know what? I'll, you know what? I'll, I'll, I'll throw the Power Rangers in this one. I will. I will. That's what I'll do. Okay, here we go. Number five, Pirates of the Caribbean. I loved the first one. Kind of the second one. The third one, just, no. I did not care for the third one at all. Number four, the Underworld Trilogy. Yes, before Twilight did the, you know, vampire and werewolf the love story, Underworld did it. With better looking vampires that actually had vampire characters that didn't look twinkle in the sunlight or anything. And really fantastic work when it came to werewolves. Number three. I'm going to hear this one. This one I'll put Harry Potter at number three. I haven't seen the first three movies because I've tried to and I just can't. I cannot watch the first three movies at all. I just, I just can't. So essentially, I'm looking at like four, five, six. I think they're all very solid, very good movies. Are they? The books are geared more towards children, but the plots in the movies are nowhere near what you would want a child to go through. About, I can't wait to be driving. Oh, did I mention that? You know, I got to watch like a friend of mine get killed in front of my very eyes, and my parents were killed when I was a child. Kind of heavy for a kid to deal with. Number three. Number two. I'm here, here again. The Saw franchise. Yes, there's six movies for it. I'm a horror movie fan. If I wanted to, I could grant over here, I've got all six of the Saw scripts. And they're all signed. So, Saw is number two. Recap. Saw, two, Potter, three, Underworld, four, Pirates, five. Number one series of the decade? Lord of the Rings. Period. Go ahead, type in how superior Harry Potter's Lord of the Rings. Go ahead. Anyways, that's done. Top ten of the decade. Now this is really hard. Certain movies, you know, like The Kingdom, very good movie. You know, the World Trade Center movie that Oliver Stone did, very good. There are lots of movies that came out that are actually very good. And it's hard to go... Then it comes down to objectiveness. You know, what movies did I enjoy the most out of the decade? Here we go. Number ten, Man on Fire. Denzel Washington, Dakota Fanny, phenomenal movie. Crash. Again, that is a very good movie. Lots of really good, solid acting. Pretentious? Yes. But, again, it's not with Memento. If you don't know anything about that movie, shame on you. That is a phenomenal movie. Hotel Rwanda. Everyone be kind of depressed. Hotel Rwanda is a great movie to watch. Children of Men. If you thought Hotel Rwanda had was depressing, there are scenes of Children of Men that are so beautifully shot that it, it takes your breath away. That is an amazing movie. Clive Owen is one of the best actors we currently have right now. You're probably thinking, those are some pretty heady movies. Number four. Star Wars Episode Three. Again, you know, I'm a nerd... I'm a dork, whatever you want to call it. And it was good to finally have the prequel trilogy, which was very inferior to the classic trilogy, comment away, had that breaking point. Did I enjoy it that much when I first saw it? No. But it had all the necessary points needed to really tie the two trilogies together. And the battle between, you know, Obi-Wan and Anakin turning to Vader, good. You know, seeing Vader in the suit for the first time, good. Birth of, you know, Luke and Leia, good. You know, that movie, it hit it hit the right spots that it, that were set up over years. Is it a final move? No. Is the acting good? No. Is it good from, like, a fanboy standpoint? Yes. So that's number four. Number three, Gladiator. Yeah. I watch this movie now, and I still kind of cry at the ending. You know, there, there's something so poignant and it's almost timeless about that movie. 
Okay. Is is any country worth the life of one good man? You know. And he fought and died for an ideal. Not even for a physical thing, but for an ideal. You know. Rome was always a constant ideal. It was never something physical. It's like perfection. You can think about it. You can whisper it. But once it becomes true existence, it ceases to be everything that it should be. You know, there's a lot in that movie. You're probably thinking, wow, you just went off the deep end about a movie that had people killing each other. Yes. But it works on many levels. It's a very good movie. Number two, The Dark Knight. Duh. So you look behind me, you see Green Lantern stuff. My Batman fan? No, not really. But that movie is amazing. I saw it in IMAX at Navy Pier. And when you leave Navy Pier, you get to essentially walk some of the spots the movie was filmed at. Have you met Christian Bale? You know, he's a pretty good guy. He gets serious about his acting, though. The movie that almost made on this list, if you if you like if you like the Batman Begins on the Dark Knight, the movie he did before Batman Begins is called The Machinist. That is a good movie. Didn't quite make it on the list. You know, certain movies like The Machinist and The Kingdom didn't make it on the list. They are very good movies. I highly recommend them. The Machinist is a creepy movie. You're going to see Christian Bale at like a hundred pounds. His next role then was Batman. So he bulked up, huge. Bale, again, is another amazing actor. I'm going to hear it for that, too. Now, number one for the decade. Gotta go with Pan's Labyrinth. I'm sorry. That movie is beautiful from start to finish. And it leaves open so many great things. Like, well, is she really a princess? Or is that just like what she thought of in her death throes? Was it all in her mind? Was it all real? That... And even, you know, Del Toro was like, it's up to you. When I met Luke Gossman discussed Pain's Labyrinth, he's like, that's a beautiful movie. I'm like, yes it is. That is an amazing movie. That is a phenomenal movie. You know, you have great acting, great story, great effects. It's beautiful on all levels. Again, recapping. One, Pain's Labyrinth. Two, Dark Knight. Three, Gladiator. Four, episode three, five, Children of Men, six, Hotel Rwanda, seven, <coughs> Memento, eight, Crash, nine, Man on Fire. Okay, I made a mistake here somewhere. Okay. Yeah, I don't have ten. Well, here's we'll throw them that tenth spot. Take your pick of any of the following movies. United 93, World Trade Center, Machinist, The Kingdom. Any of those would fill that 10 spot pretty well. And with that, you know, it's been a great decade for movies. Looking forward to the next decade. And, uh, everyone have a safe and joyous New Year.